Hi, mate. How's it going? How are you, mate? You good? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Good stuff. Thanks for doing this again. No, it's all right. This is on my phone. Is it all right? Yeah, it's fine, yeah. I can't all this. All right, cool. Could you just um, start by just giving um, your name, age, weight, and just a little bit about yourself? So, my name's Callum Thompson. I'm 22. Uh, I box at super featherweight. And so, so, yeah, I've been boxing now for, started competing from when I was 11. Um, won two GBT Nation titles. Boxed for England since I was 13 until I was 18. And then I got onto the GB squad. And then from there, I was on there for two years. Um, and then from then, obviously, I've made the choice to turn professional now. And I'm, um, I'm, I'm just awaiting my professional debut. How excited are you for that professional debut then? Because obviously you've been waiting a while. Yeah, I know. I can't. I mean, obviously, with, with what's been going on with with the COVID and stuff, it's um, it's obviously just put a little bit of a delay on it. But now that we've obviously got the green light, that you no know, crowds are going to be coming back next month and stuff. It's obviously just gives me that little bit more motivation. But uh, yeah, it's been a long time coming, so I just can't wait to get the ball rolling. Really. You mentioned about the fans coming back. Then is it going to be <clears throat> a case of you getting? Your family and friends there just to to get in that first big fight that first moment. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. I mean, I don't know what the what the actual restrictions are with like the capacity and stuff, but um, I mean, listen, I just you know, I just want to fight now. I mean, I, I'm I, I'd fight without fans, but obviously, it's just it's just that added bonus in it with with having your friends and family there to, to be able to support you and stuff. So yeah, I mean, I'm 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 open that I'm, I can I'm open it to full capacity, but I don't like I say I don't really know where. With the restrictions and stuff. Do you have a sort of <clears throat> a date for that? Like a certain time when you think it's going to be between? Um, pushing to six. I believe it's all six weeks. I mean, like I said, I haven't got a, I haven't got an actual date that I can announce just yet. But it's looking about about six weeks time. Sounds good. I mean, I know we all can't wait, and there's a lot of hype around you, and I think rightly so, given your uh, your amateur career as well, and the fact that you're. At the Gallagher gym as well. Can you just talk a little bit about how how you've uh, you've settled in there since um, early February? Yeah, so um, it all started, it all come about. Um, I was sparring Scott Quick for his for his last professional fight against Sean O'Carroll. Um, you know, I got asked to come down, do, done a few sparring sessions with him over you know a, a course of a couple of weeks, and then um, I was speaking to Andy Carolla. Um, obviously, I explained that I was you know looking to turn professional. And, I was looking for a coach, etc. And um, he mentioned Joe, and obviously with that been sparring and stuff, um, he showed some advice to me down. And I, and, and I, it's just that's how it started. Me, I was just training there, and then I've just you know obviously with with the with the, with it being a such a high profile gym, I mean you know it was an easy decision to sort of to just stay there, and you know the people I'm training with and stuff. I mean I, I'm learning every day, and and yeah, at the minute I'm just I'm I'm completely settled there now, and, and I love it, mate. I've I've really settled in. You just said, yeah, the <clears throat> the people that are there, the the high level, you know, world champions and world level fighters, and um, just to take, just to see them every day, is that just is that one of the me- the main benefits of being there, just to see how they work? Yeah, definitely. I mean, listen, they've all been there and done it, and obviously, with, 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 with where I am in the stage of my career now, you know, it's only gonna it's only gonna make me improve. You know, I've just got to be like a sponge now and just soak everything in and just take take him, um, take the advice that they're giving me and. And like I say, yeah, it's just brilliant. I guess there's a little bit of a Liverpool link up then, I guess, with, with Calvin Smith and Natasha Jonas being there as well. Is a little bit of a Liverpool sort of feel towards it at times? Yeah, I mean, obviously that helps, you know, with with, with, with being a couple of scouts there and that. But, um, but listen, everyone's family there, you know, I've, I've been sort of welcomed in with, with open arms. And and yeah, I've been, I've been obviously made feel very welcome there since I've been there. I can't help but notice you're sporting um, your sponsorship uh, T-shirt there. Is it is the kit? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask about it, Buzz. Yeah, I just want to tell you how you got involved in that and the fact that I don't know if, it, if many amateur fighters or well, people who are about to turn pro have a have a sponsorship like that. I don't know if that's a thing. No, um, well, it's actually it's actually my best mate who was uh-huh. whose company. Um, so obviously that's just how, how it's come about and sponsoring me and stuff. But yeah, no, listen, he, he's absolutely smashed it. He's you know he's how far he's come from when he very started. You know he's everywhere now at the minute. 
So yeah, it's obviously it's brilliant for me. And I, I don't know if you've seen, but he's just just sponsored uh, Jazza and Leon Edwards, who's actually in the UFC fighting. I think he's fighting six eight years. So yeah, he's, they've absolutely smashed it. Sounds good. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So obviously you've had that Team GB experience. You know, a brilliant gym, um, and there's a lot of hype around you. Can you just start outline what your, your goals are like for the next two to three years? Just deal this early part of your career. Yeah, so for me now, obviously, it's just obviously just get the ball rolling, get me pro debut out the way, and you know, I just I just want to show people actually what I'm about. You know, it's 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 easy enough saying I can do this, I can do that, but you know, I'm realistic. I've got to get in there and show people exactly why I believe I'll be a world champion, and, and exactly why people are saying the things they're saying about me. And you know, I think you know when when I do get the chance to prove it, I think people will actually see why and how far I can go. Are you sort of yeah, yeah, you said you just want to get out there and prove it now. You're a bit sick of talking about you want to do this, you want to do that. You just want to show them now. Yeah, that's it. I mean, listen, like I say, you can, you can say all you, all you want, you know, but the big thing is actually getting in there and doing it and actually proving to people why, you know, I, I believe I can become a world champion and why I believe that I can do the things that I say I can do. Obviously, we've seen people like, you know, Campbell Hatton turn pro and he's gone, you know, slightly different way to, to maybe the path where you've come up. Do you think having that amateur experience is vital to to take you further, or is it just how you improve fight by fight, you know, month by month in the gym? Yeah, I mean, listen, it obviously helps, but it's I don't think it's a, it's a major thing. I mean, you see people who who don't have any amateur. I mean, like like Conor Ben, he's a brilliant example. No real amateur background, but you know, he's come on to be you know fighting for a world title next potentially. But obviously, I think. It definitely helps, you know. I fought at such a high level, you know, for people who, who won Olympic medals, and I mean, you just can't buy that experience. So I think when it does come to, you know, boxing, boxing is journeyman, if you like. People who you don't really have much footage on, you know, I, I'm I'm able to. I don't know what the word I'm looking for. I'm able to just like, I don't need to. I don't need to watch videos of them. You know, I'll be able to just. Facebook, whatever comes in, comes at me because I'm used to, I'm used to it as an amateur. You know, people you, you get get in there with different styles day by day, especially in tournaments. You know, you're boxing three four days on the run, and you maybe one day you're boxing North Ducks, next you're boxing a Southpaw. So I, I'll uh, I think I'll be chance. <laughs> I hear a lot about these um <clears throat> these Team GB experiences. They sound that they're just it's, it's a lot of boxing, a lot of experience and. Obviously, you have that as well, but when you're in the gym with all the, the same level fight, you know, the people around the team you've been all the way, it's, that must be a brilliant experience as well to have all the people that, you know, potentially in five, six, seven years, you could all be, you know, fighting for European world titles. You know, do you think that's quite a, a cool thing? Yeah, definitely. I mean, listen, me and me, time on TV was brilliant. You know, I, I was obviously there with some brilliant, brilliant prospects, and you know, you, you spar, these are all sparring together every day. and you said, all, you know, some of them, you know, potentially Olympic medalists and, you know, you're, you're sparring every day. So things like that, you know, you're only just going to get better. But listen, I can see a few of them now who, who are there, who are on the road for Tokyo that are definitely going to be some world champions in the future. You know, there's some brilliant talents there. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, it'd be good to see, obviously, when, when we all potentially do turn over and we all, like, meet paths and, you know, we'll all win world titles together and all. I think that'll be a, a brilliant experience. Um, how would you rate? Um, well, I spoke to Peter McGrell actually yesterday. Um, how would you rate his uh, his um chances in the, in the Olympics coming up? Listen, Peter McGrell is one of the most talented kids you'll ever meet in your life. He's pretty brilliant. You know, he's just a naturally gifted kid, and I think he'll. De- I, I I think he's Olympic medalist def- definitely. I think he'll win, win Olympic gold. I think he'll definitely go on to win a world title, hundred percent. That's big. <laughs> it's big, uh, big praise indeed. Um, how are you? Do you think about the Olympics much now? Obviously, now you got the the focus of turning pro. But do you ever think maybe you wish you'd, you'd had the chance to go? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's it's not something that I really wanted to do. But obviously, I'm chances got sort of taken away from me. But I, I know I can't sit there and dwell on it now. I've got I've got no got another got another uh, path. To, to go go uh, go ahead on so I'm just trying to focus on that now. Yeah, rightly so. Um, so can you just tell me a little bit about 
you know your style and, and perhaps anyone you know your, your influences on your, your boxing style and how you've how you see yourself i mean listen it's 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 a it's it's a bit of a big big step to say but i say i sort of similar style. maybe a similar style to lomachenko a little bit you know i think i'm quite a like a a movement type of fighter you know i don't like to stay there and sort of get involved a lot you know i try and you know hit and move and you know make people miss a lot so I'd say that's sort of the closest person, but I mean, listen, it's a big statement to say, you know, you know what I mean? I mean, you're the, I, I, I must be an admirer of the, the sweet science. And if you're a hit and mover and looking to, to be that sort of style, is the types of fighters you, you look at then the Lomachenko's maybe, um, your Billy Joe to, to a certain extent as well, those type of fighters. Yeah, definitely. You know, with the main so pause, I mean, listen, there's a billion people to watch, you know what? I've studied Lomachenko for quite a long time. Um, you know, the likes of Canelo, Billy Joe, you know, any any sort of show balls like that. You know, I, I used to watch a little bit of Pinot with her. But, uh, yeah. Are there any people in the in the world that you really want to meet in boxing, you know, in terms of like, inspirations and, um, you know, role models to a certain extent that you haven't met yet? Definitely not much. I mean, listen, the, 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 uh, his record speaks for itself. Done 1896 amateur fights and only lives on one. Um, you know, what she fights in his professional career, he was fighting for the world title. I mean, you know, you don't meet many people who can do the things he's done. Um, I think think many people have written him off now. We're, we're obviously losing. But, um, but listen, he's still a tremendous talent and he'll definitely come again. Yeah, he's back in uh, the summer, I think. Um, uh, Japanese lad, is he? I'm yeah. not too sure. Um, yeah, he, was like. yeah, I think he's back fighting him in the summer. Do you think he can mix it in with the with the new crop when he after after a win there potentially? Yeah, definitely. I, to be honest, I, I I think the best of Lomachenko was when he was at super featherweight. I think lightweight's probably a little bit of a push for him now, but listen, he's sort of like growing into the weight a little bit. And maybe Super Feather might be a little bit of a struggle for him, but I, I personally think that, you know, that was sort of the best way for him, uh, Super Feather. How about yourself in terms of the weight? Do you, do you see yourself a lot, you know, a lot moving up in weights, moving down in weights? Is, is it something you think about a lot or is it just something you just sort of happens naturally for your career? Yeah, I think obviously, listen, I'm 22. I don't think I'm gonna do. I'm. I'm not gonna majorly grow much more. But I think should be further away for me. I'll be. You know, I don't reckon I'll majorly struggle, but I'll do it quite comfortably. So I can potentially see myself probably moving up to lightweight in, in years to come. But at the minute now, it's not something that I'm thinking about doing. You know, I, I just wanna obviously make a statement in the super featherweight division and then see how we go from there. Really, and then listen, Joe. Whatever Joe says, I, I sort of listen to if he feels like. No, it'll be time to move up then. That that's exactly what I'll do. So in terms of another well, I have to, I normally ask everyone this, but it, it, it's a question that everyone talks about. It's, it's AJ Fury again. Just just a quick one on that. Just do you, do you can you pick a winner there or is or do you have a sort of in a debate with yourself about it? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's a 50-50 fight, two completely different styles. I mean, you've obviously you've seen AJ AJ Ruby is one, you know, um and then how much he changed in the second fight. So you can see if he can fight and he can box, but I mean, there's not many people like Tyson Fury, is there? I mean, who, who do you even spar? Who, who do you replicate it? Who just, I know when you're fighting him, he's got a bit of a mad style. Um, I'm edging towards Tyson, but I mean, listen, it's just whoever turns up on the night, isn't it? You know, you're, everyone knows Andy Joshua's got that knockout power, and it's if he lands, if he lands, I'm sure Tyson Fury will go, but. It's it's if he lands in it, you know. Tyson Fury is a very slick fighter and he's very awkward. So I just think whoever turns up on the night and and yeah, but but I am edging a little bit towards Tyson Fury. Just just coming off coming off the Deontay Wilder win, that's all. Yeah, even though it has been well, if he does fight in so it was August, it, it's going to be talked about. It. That's going to be like a, a year and four months out of the ring. Do you think yeah, that's, think that's an important factor. I mean. Mm, listen, obviously you want to be you want to be active, but listen, he's been in some big fights over the past couple of years. So, I mean, he had yeah, we've seen he had him a big long blowout for three years. He was out the ring, and and he, you know he come back and won a world title. So I think 
listen, he's answered that question already. I don't think it's sort of affected them so, so much. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, let's just talk a little bit about the super featherweight scene in, in England then, you know, in Britain. Um, obviously, you've got a lot of a lot of fighters around. You've, you've got people like Nick Ball as well, who's, who's young and Liverpool, from Liverpool and uh, unbeaten, up to the likes of, you know, uh, Archie Sharp, Joe Cordina, um, Zelfa Barrett uh, and Martin Ward as well at the top of the, the box rankings. Um, how do you rate the scene and do you think that you can maybe go above and beyond what the, the people are doing now? Yeah, listen to me. It's definitely, the, obviously, the division's flying, but like I said at the minute, I've only had my pro debut. Yeah, I don't really need to worry about it, any of them in particular right now. I mean, when the time comes, and I'll obviously, you know, them fights will probably be made, but who's to know when that'll be and and and, and, and what stage of the clear they're going to be at when it actually comes about. So, like I say, yeah, it's flying and, and I definitely feel as though domestically I'm, I'm up there, you know, I feel as though I can, I can hold me on with them, but like I say, I don't need to worry about them as of just yet. I've just, I'm just starting my career, so when the time comes, I think, you know, that'll be talked about. Could you, who do you think is the best in, in the division then in, in England then? Ah, uh, Super Featherweight? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's probably between probably Martin Jay and Joe Cordy, you know, Joe Cordy, you know, I love Joe Cordy in the style. He's, he's such a naturally gifted person. And I think I think he'll go very far. Same with Martin J. Ward, you know, two, obviously they're at the same gym, so I don't think their paths are going to cross. But um, but yeah, it's, it, I'd say it's, it's out of them too, definitely. Yeah, definitely some good fights to be made there. Um, yeah. Last two questions, really. Um First one, just a little bit. What's what's the best part about being a boxer then for you? What's what's the best feeling? I know you've done it for such a long time. It's a bit of a strange question, but just sort of what's the the best part about it? Um, I've, I I think in the future it's gonna be like the praise. You know, I know I know I know people. I, I'm not myself personally. I'm not in it for the money, but obviously that's gonna be a big big factor of it. You know, listen, who, who's who? No, someone's gonna love making making a big big money doing something they love so I'd say it's probably I probably yeah, probably listen it's got to be the money in it it's got to be well you don't get punched in the face for nothing do you <laughs> yeah. or in your case not getting punched but um yeah just can you just outline what the the next what do you want out the next year then what, what's where do you want to see yourself in a year's time just to so obviously June June make me debut and then from there mate I just want to be active you know I've I've had two years out two years out of the ring now, so I think I just want to be active and you know get get maybe three fights, three four fights by by the end of the year, and then you know sort of like make 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 a um, make a prince in the in the super featherweight division and and show people that I'm I'm a force and you know I'm I'm a prospect and then and yeah. Yeah, I'm sure if your skills in the in the ring don't show it, I'm sure Joe Gallagher will be shouting the praises anyway, as he usually does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've, um, I can't let it down, can I? Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's all I've got for you, mate. Nice one. Um, thanks for doing this again. Um, Hold on, what is, mate? Yeah, hopefully I can. Uh, hopefully you get that fight date sorted soon, and we can uh, see you out there. Don't know where it's going to be, but. I'm I'm, yeah, based, well, I'm based in Liverpool, so I, I'd love to see you fight in Liverpool at some point. Yeah, hope, mate, well, hopefully I can announce it soon, mate, and um, and yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure people people will people will know soon later. Smashing, mate! Thanks again, and have a good rest of your day. And I'll have this published soon on YouTube on um, YouTube and Twitter, so um, I'll, I'll tag you in it. Cheers, thanks, mate. Right, so, mate have a good day. You too, mate. Sir.